let's have a look at the chow break test in this video. Suppose we still have our regression as in the previous video where we regress sales on the lagged value of sales. So how does an increase in sales in the um, previous period affects the sales in the current period? For instance, if we have a look at the regression over here, we can notice that we have different slopes. So in this part, we can see that we have a slight increase in sales across time. Let's say for the sake of the example, that would be 1.2. So the effect of sales in the previous period is 1.2 on sales in the current period, meaning that if sales in the previous period increase by uh, $1,000, so we're going to talk in dollars right away. This is just the effect in units, but since sales is measured in thousands of dollars, we'll give the interpretation in thousands of dollars as well. So if sales in the previous period, in the previous period increases by $1,000, sales in the current period would increase by $1,200. And I hope the intuition makes sense because what we're saying is that if in uh, the year 2015, our sales increased because we had more customers, because we were more popular, those people most likely spoke about our brand, about our clothes to their friends. So the next year we have more customers through the effect of word of mouth and advertising and so on. So we would increase our sales even further in the next period in 2016. Hope this makes sense. Now, this is, this is the regular regression, right? This is by taking into account that uh, we have a linear regression without noticing that we have this we have this break in the regression literally a break meaning that the slope across time is changing if we were to predict the data if we were to fit the data and we would draw this slope of 1.2 across time something like that we can see that we, our errors are going to deviate from it quite a lot we will have we will have a lot of errors over here because we're not accounting for the fact that we're having a different slope beyond a certain point. So over here, maybe the effect of sales in a previous period on the current period is going to be much larger. It's going to be 1.9 because the slope is pretty steep. And we can see that this happens beyond the year of 2009. So maybe in 2009, our, our store did really well. Our advertising was really smart. So we really uh, got new customers for the future. That's why our sales kept increasing so fast. But we have to see if that's true or not, because just looking at the graph is not enough for us. How would we do that? Well, we have to take into account this effect from 2009. And the way to do it, we would run another regression by including a dummy variable for the effect of sales in 2009. So uh, let's write it to see what, what we actually mean. Uh, we would have a, a new regression over here, sales across time, which would be based on different parameters now because we are regressing a new line, so to speak. So new line has new parameters. Um, so we have alpha, beta, I don't know any other Greek letters. So let's just say A plus B times sales in the previous period. Plus let's put our let's put our effect of the dummy variable. So that would be 2009. That's going to be our dummy variable. And this dummy variable takes the year takes the value of one. If we uh, takes the value of one, if we actually are in the year 2009 so if we take into account the year 2009 and zero if we do not so this will take the value of one when we are regressing taking into account that we had the effect of 2009 sales in our model now the 2009 is a dummy variable which will have a coefficient it will have an effect let's say that effect will be equal to c so let's put it let's put that effect equals to c now, one more thing to keep in mind is that we will have the effect of the lagged values after 2009. So we will have the coefficient D times the effect of the lagged values of sales, sales in the previous period that's affecting sales in the current period beyond the year of 2009. So multiplied with the dummy variables, dummy variable of 2009, which will also take the value of one or zero. So one. Or zero and then we will we are left with something that cannot explain sales very well which will be an unexplained term unexplained term across time now what is the difference between this regression and the next regression well the difference is that now we are adding new coefficients we are adding new variables to the model which variables are we adding to the model we are adding the dummy variable of the year 2009 and we're adding this one over here, this interaction, so to speak, between the sales in the previous period with our dummy variable. So we're adding two 
variables to the model and we know that when we add variables to the model our r square is increasing but we want to know if this if this increase in r square is going to be significant or not that's what we're going to test we're going to test if the r square changes significantly because if it does it means the new regression with the new parameters predicts the data better so maybe if we regress the data again by taking into account this break we're not gonna have this trend but maybe we'll we'll predict the trend something like that we'll predict it with this line which will capture which will capture the green line better we'll have less variation around that line than before so if that's the case then adding the dummy variable adds value to the model meaning that we have a significant break in the regression so the r square test that we're going to do is just going to be a regular f test on a change in r square so we will take the f test which computes the difference between the r square of the full model and the full model is the one where we include the dummies so this one over here the second one this one is going to be r square of the full model because the r square would be higher in this case minus the r square sorry r square of the restricted model divided by the number of additional parameters which would be one and two so two additional parameters over let me go below one minus one minus r square of the full model divided by the number of observations minus the number of parameters in the full model which is one two three so minus three and minus one and minus three minus one and this will give us our specific f value and as always we're going to compare with the critical value so we will have a f critical value let's suppose at the five percent significance level with a degrees of freedom of two and then here we'll have n minus three minus one and by the way from the model let's not forget i actually forgot uh, we have 16 observations in our graph on our graph with the sales we have data from the year 2000 to 2016 in this specific example so we would have 16 observations 16 observations over here minus 3 minus 1 so that would be an f critical value at the 5% level 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 16 minus 3 is 13 minus 1 12 degrees of freedom in the denominator now with this in mind we can give a conclusion and let's suppose that our conclusion is going to be to reject the null hypothesis well if we reject the null hypothesis if we reject the null hypothesis what do we say we say that there is a significant significant break in the regression at the year 2000 in the regression in 2009 2009 meaning that we have to take into account that the slope in the regression will change so that we estimate a different line altogether such that we have a higher r square a better fit to the data and that fit to the data must be must be significantly better and with this test that's what we conclude that the increase in r square is significant meaning that our hypothesis that there is this break in the regression was true so we have a significant break in the regression hope this makes sense and we are done